how luxurious is mm -hmm. this? I feel like eating food and you just go out to your garden and pick from your tree. Ah. Last week we left beautiful Madeira and sailed south to La Palma in the Canary Islands that has a volcano that started erupting in September. So we're at the new spot again in the marina. We just went crazy over there, so we decided to move. Uh, it's much better on this side. And the wind has calmed down a bit as well. So today it's actually quite nice in here. So much calmer. We slept really well. I hope it stays like this now. <laughs> yeah, it's amazing really how big of a difference it was between over there and here. Um, I mean, it is common today, but you can still see that that boat over there is moving around a lot more than, than we do on this side. So, I guess it was because we were closer to the wall and we got that reflection from the walls and the swell was coming in here. A lot of stuff <laughs> As, as usual, as always. <laughs> gonna be away for uh, what is it? 48 hours. Very <laughs> uh, is there in the back. We're heading up in the mountains today, and we're gonna be, uh, meet our friends, Krista and Seb, and they're gonna show us some places here on the island. We'll go to a national park, I think. Maybe do some hiking, and of course, go and see the volcano. We were going to the west side of La Palma, where we would meet our former sailing friends that we last saw in the San Blas Islands in the Caribbean four years ago. After a coffee, we drove together up in the woods. Yeah, okay. So, do you want to walk around here maybe? Yeah. Uh, the way, maybe? You can hear the volcano. Roaring. Yeah, we're downwind from it now, so it's even louder here. We're gonna go into, gonna go to this lookout point over there, but it was closed, right? Yeah, too windy. Too, too windy. windy. So now we go look around a little bit here, the pine tree forest. Made a little stop. We found an almond tree. This almond was inside of this one. Very tasty, soft ones. Not as uh, hard and dry, the ones you get in the store usually. Let's open this one too. Vera, ska vi öppna den också? Ska du? Du bankar också. Another one. Stopped on the way to Seven Christmas Place to have a look at the volcano from up here. 
and now the sun is about to set and you're about to see the lava flows now and it get, gets a bit darker. I don't know if you can see it now on camera, but you can see the rivers of lava pouring down towards the sea from here. It's amazing, it's so big, this area where, that is filled up with lava. I read somewhere that this is the most destructive er eruption in uh, modern history on the island, or the biggest eruption. All that black soot you see coming out of the volcano is like this ash that you have here on the, on the street. And the whole day now in, in the town we've been getting that in our eyes and on the table at the restaurant and everywhere. People wear masks and protective glasses. This huge, really impressive mountain like wall or ridge, uh, I got some ash in my eye, is part of the Roque de Muchachos, which is the volcano that created the whole island. So can you imagine that a yeah. volcano has created this whole island and now we see that tiny volcano down there and then imagine how big was the volcano that made La Palma or and all the other islands here. That's kind of impressive to think about. Oh, it's steep. <laughs> it's pretty steep, huh? Wow. And Christian said they live up on this mountain here, so we're gonna go to their house now. They live on 1,000 meters above sea level. I'm walking over and see if we can get a look at the volcano from over here. Very steep down there. Vertical wall, wall almost. Shit, the sun just. Wow. <laughs> this okay. is quite steep. <laughs> On our way to our friend's house, we stopped at a viewpoint to see the volcano in the dark. <laughs> yeah, and I can't see. A lot of ash. Yeah, and it's windy. I'm standing there and filming. <laughs> smell like this in the store. There's been some ash falling during the <laughs> night. Yeah, not only during the night, I think it was from yesterday when we made that stop. The whole camera is also filled with ash. So this is Seven Christas land. It's about two uh, acres, 20,000 square meters. And, yeah. The ocean is over there. You yeah. can see on a clear day. Today's a little cloudy. It's easier. How long have you lived here now for Seb? Uh, four months now. Yes. And uh, it feels like home? Yeah, definitely feels like home. Yes. That's what we're waiting for after the boat life. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> What's the best about living here? Uh, you don't have to worry about the weather. <laughs> <laughs> even Compared if it to rain, boat life. Even yeah. if it rains, if you have 30 knots, it doesn't matter. Yeah. The house will not move. Yeah. So. That's, that's really one of the biggest points, yeah, yeah. not to worry about the boat anymore. Maybe one day I have to make a, a path, you know, to... Krista, what do you like the most uh, about because, uh, your new uh, house and home? I and love the fruit trees. Yeah. We have a lot of them, the around 170. Yeah. So... So this They're my time. favorite at this point. Oh, yeah. Love so eating fresh cousin, organic fruit straight from the trees. The mm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And hey, on, hey, on the map. Lukta på den. Lukta den gott. Få lukta. Oh, it smells delicious. How luxurious is mm. this? Feel like eating fruit and you just go out to your garden and pick from your tree. Ah. 
Ah. No, no. Because if they mention like this, yeah. the actual mm. service area must be much more. Mm. They threw a little. <laughs> Process them, it's like bitter. Yeah. Uh oh. No, it's, not, uh -oh. it's not bad, but it's bitter. Oh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> not good. <laughs> it's not good. Mm. Uh. <laughs> oh, <me. laughs> oh my god, what a strong flavor! <laughs> yeah, it's super bitter. We are up on the highest peak on the island, Roque de Muchachos. And it's cold here, but the sun just came out, so now it's much nicer. And we have, we're making a time lapse over those clouds that are just rolling over the edge. Behind that little hill over there, you have the erupting volcano, Cumbre Vieja. Los Llanos is down there. The ocean here. They have a lot of observatories yeah. here on the top, and uh, that's actually the reason why there aren't that many flights coming to this island because they can only have a certain amount of flights every day because the uh, airplanes uh, pollute the sky and then they can't observe, do the observations that they need. So I, that's also one of the reasons why the tourism isn't that big here as on the other uh, Canary Islands. It's quite far down, looking down into the crater of the big volcano here on the island. Uh, we're at 2400 above sea level, just about, a bit more maybe. And I guess it's like, I don't know, five, six hundred meters down to the floor. So it's time for lunch. We'll drive down the mountain a bit and uh, Seven Krista knows a restaurant that we're going to. Pretty big. <laughs> yeah. home and we'll take the road through Los Llanos because it's the fastest way and we're starting to descending from the mountain and we're seeing this huge dark black ash cloud it's already down yeah, here it's ash see, everywhere it's, look it's all dark outside already back late to the boat and saw that our boat had moved spot and that our previous dock was now also broken up. We're at the place now called uh, La Cumbrecita, uh, pretty much in the middle of the island. 
um, we had reserved this uh, parking space here for two hours to go on a little hike but we just found out that all the hiking trails are closed because of the volca volcano um, so we will just go a little bit here look at the surroundings it's very very beautiful I forgot my jacket so borrowing Juan's uh, sailing jacket The volcano is like down there somewhere, we can't really see it from up here. But the sound is amazing, I mean it's so powerful, reflecting against these mountains here. Constant rumbling. Ah, it's a pity it's closed here, it's so beautiful. But I can understand why. There's been a lot of earthquakes and they are afraid of rocks falling from the mountains here. We're at this viewpoint overlooking the volcano. Now we're going to head down to the marina here and uh, have lunch and uh, that's pretty close to where the lava enters the sea, so maybe we can see that from, from over there. But it's so much material. This whole mountain you see over there, that wasn't there before the volcano eruption. So that's created since September, this whole mountain. And then the lava field, you know, to the west of that is just enormous. It has swallowed up a whole village. I think it's 6,000 people, 7,000 people that are evacuated from there. 2,500 homes are engulfed with lava in the lava flow. And uh, yeah, like I said, that whole mountain is created during that time. So it's so much material that is coming out. It's mind-boggling really. out at the pier here in the marina in Tessacorte and here you can see the lava flow where it has entered the water the sea and the volcano is up there it's quite a lot of ash being spewed out today but luckily the wind there's not a lot of wind so it's drifting in a southerly direction today you don't really see the red color because it's daylight but if you would come here at night you can see the red lava flood running into the ocean there. The lava has created two deltas in the sea. The southern one measuring 43 hectares and the one further north 5 hectares. More than 3,000 buildings have been destroyed such as churches, schools, a cemetery, banana plantations, and over 1,300 are homes. We went back to Los Llanos, where we're going to meet Christian Seb's friend Victor to talk with him about the volcano. So now we're at uh, Victor's house. Uh, it has amazing view over the sea, and of course the volcano is right there. Victor runs an Airbnb via Sila next to his own house, and it has the most amazing garden. Yeah, what a beautiful place, huh? Yeah, really an amazing view. Wow. 
nombre es Víctor Pérez, soy de aquí de la isla de La Palma y de aquí del barrio, de lo que se llama Los Barros. Me dedico actualmente pues, a cuidar un poquito los jardines, eh, atender un poquito a los clientes que vienen y luego bueno, lo que hemos visto abajo en mi casa, que es lo que son las cositas de arte. Que Todo son... tiene un sentido. Y ahora estamos aquí al lado del volcán. Sí. Eh, ¿Cómo, ¿Cómo fue? Cuéntame del, del eh, primer día. El día 19, um, fue cerca de las 12 del mediodía. Realmente yo estaba aquí arriba preparando la casa para unos clientes. Fue cuando he hecho la primera explosión y la verdad que impresionó. Pero malo, porque todos esperábamos que fuera en otro sitio. Entonces vino a reventar por donde estaba la grieta más débil, que era la cumbre vieja, y es donde más daño ha hecho. Si hubiese sido por GD no hubiese hecho tanto daño. Y aquí el daño más es la impotencia, de no saber que, cómo puedes ayudar, ver a tus amigos de la infancia que lo han perdido todo, las casas, su bodeguita, su finca de plátanos. Eh, es muy... ¿Duro? Sí, mm -hmm. bastante. Los primeros días sí fue horrible porque era demasiado ruido, muchos temblores y lo que era la, la lava, ...llegaba casi que a los 400, 500 metros de altura... ...eso sí era impresionante... ...y luego aquí que notas los temblores, los oyes venir... ...como si fuese cuando se acerca un coche... ...que vas viendo... ...impresionante y, y te da susto al mismo tiempo, eh, ¿no? Susto no. relativo, porque realmente estamos... ...vivimos encima de un volcán... ...esta es la segunda isla más joven... ...entonces todavía está en proyecto de ir creciendo... ...miedo... Sí, porque no sabíamos dónde iba a explotar, dónde iba a reventar. ¿Y cómo es eso, vivir en, en una isla o en un sitio donde hay volcanes activos? No, hasta que no pasó el volcán, digamos que muy cómodo. Digamos que vivíamos en un paraíso. Pero, claro, al explotar el volcán aquí, luego es la incertidumbre que no sabemos cuándo va a terminar. Y hasta que no termine no sabemos qué daño ha hecho, por dónde empezar. Una vez que termine, pues somos duros, porque realmente donde eso era antes un antiguo volcán, entonces siempre la gente mayor iba construyendo, arreglando, picando el mal país, que es la lava ya antigua. No, hasta ahora solo no han afectado dos días la ceniza fuerte. Lo único son los temblores, que bueno, el peor día fue uno que tuvimos en 24 horas 370 temblores. Pero la noche que yo más miedo he pasado fue una madrugada que fue cuando rompió el cono, que se desbordó. Pensábamos que era el fin del mundo. Porque era, no paró, fueron cinco horas de constantes temblores, la onda expansiva, porque claro, no tenemos va recto, o sea, no nada que choque. Entonces la onda expansiva la nota. Y esa fue una noche muy... Como los tsunamis de agua, pues se veía la lava desde aquí, se veía ir caminando, la verdad que fue la peor noche que yo he pasado en 55 años que tengo, digamos que ha sido la peor que, que he pasado. Por lo demás ya digamos que llega un momento en que te acostumbras, ya lo tienes claro, como rutina. Claro. Yo lo que ya procuro es, me vengo para mis jardines, que es lo que me relaja bastante y pongo música. ¿Y es la primera vez que experiencia un, un volcán? Yo, para mí, es la segunda. Yo tuve la suerte de que me llevo mi padre con cinco años al Teneguía. Un, un espectáculo, que no hizo daño. Mm. Bueno, sí mató, murió una o dos personas, pero por la ignorancia de los gases, de no saber si te podías acercar o no podías. ¿Y qué ha pasado con la gente que no tiene en casas ahora? Por ejemplo, aquí en la casa de al lado viven tres familias, que lo perdieron todo. Un poco más arriba, otro tanto. Después, pues siempre hay gente que pues, ahora mismo están en caravanas, hay otras que están en el hotel, otras están en la zona militar de Santa Cruz de la Palma, otros están con familiares. ¿Y cómo te, cómo te ha afectado a ti el, el volcán? Eh, anímicamente, digamos que... duele, duele ver que... Ver, sobre todo por la tele, y ver imágenes que yo procuro ya no ver mucho las noticias, de tus amigos eh, con la nevera, con el colchón, en una camioneta, salir pitando y no llevarte más nada. Afectarme, a mí realmente no me ha afectado en nada, digamos material o de que si sí, alguna casa de algún familiar y nada. Dentro de lo malo que ha sido y de lo que está siendo, es todo un espectáculo. Esto es algo que no se suele ver, bueno, muy poco. Y tenerlo tan cerca, menos todavía. Y luego aquí, ya te digo, lo tiene enfrente de casa. Es una, una gran ventaja 
que lo puedes ver y estamos a como unos 7 o 8 kilómetros de distancia en línea recta. A few days later, the volcano calmed down. And after 10 days, the authorities just now declared that the eruption is over. Let's now hope the island gets the help it needs to be able to recuperate from this natural disaster. Thank you so much for watching. If you would like to contribute to our production, please consider to join our Patreon crew.